time for The Pet Show with America's favorite pet expert, Warren Eckstein. Warren is the author of How to Get Your Cat to Do What You Want and How to Get Your Dog to Do What You Want. He's here to answer all your pet and animal questions. And now, Warren Eckstein. Is your dachshund acting depressed? Are your Persians a bit paranoid? Does your terrier need some therapy? Well, if you love animals, care about wildlife and the environment, and really want to understand how your pet's thinking and why they do some of the amazing things and maybe some of the not-so-amazing things they do, stay tuned because once again, right here, right now, it is time for The Pet Show, America's first and only real pet psychology training behavior and of course pet lifestyle show so hop up on my couch uh, bring those adorable little furry buddies with you folks because it is that time once again to let the animal analyzing begin hey good morning everybody i'm warren Eckstein. this is the pet show the place where we absolutely positively never a doubt about it love adore and as i stress every single week respect pets and animals as much as you do by the way, we are growing in leaps and bounds. So if you'd like to join me on the Ever Growing Pet Show family, you want to make a comment about your dog or your cat, how wonderful they are, how you just adopted this beautiful dog or cat, or maybe you have a question, your, your cat refuses to use the litter box or your dog really despises your new boyfriend, give me a call. That is what this show is all about, helping you cope with your pets, more than likely helping your pets cope with you. By the way, if you happen to be a new listener or a regular listener to the show, it doesn't make any difference. Just a reminder that because I have the greatest sponsors, many of my sponsors here on the Pet Show have been with me for 20 years. Because I have the greatest sponsors here on the show, everyone, everyone that calls into the show and gets through to me live on the air will be getting an amazing, a fantastic gift for your best friend. Many of the gifts I give away, 20, 30, 40 bucks and more. So I will help you cope with your pets, help your pets cope with you. And at the same time, a great gift will be on its way for your best friend. So here's that phone number. 866-870-KRLA. That's 866-870-KRLA. Or if you're a numbers person like me, 866-870-5752. 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. Plenty of time to answer all of your pet and animal questions. Lots of great stuff to give away as well. Interesting show coming up today. I'm going to tell you about an appearance um, that's going to take place in a great organization, Chiquita's Friends, at an incredible location at Cornell and Agora Hills coming up on June 24th. I'm going to give you some more information about that. If you live in Los Angeles, I know a lot of my listeners and a lot of people on Facebook are outside of LA, but it's going to be what, 90 degrees today downtown? Then like 90, it's going to be real hot. So we're going to talk a little bit about keeping your pets cool in the summer and how to really know if your dog or cat even is suffering from heat exposure. And would you know what to do? Many people don't. They'll put ice. It may not be the right thing to do. So we're going to take a look at that coming up a little bit later on today's show. And here's some controversy, okay? I get this all the time. I had an argument several times with one of the main hosts here on KRLA. And here, what we're going to talk about. What if a human being, listen to me carefully, what if a human being and a dog or a cat for that matter, stood side by side and both really, really needed help? But you could only choose one. Which one would you choose? You might be surprised by a new study and the results. You might be surprised by some of the arguments I've had over the years. And people say, come on, Warren, you can't choose a dog or a cat over a person. Well, maybe I can. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Also coming up on today's show. So your cat is getting older. Yeah, they do get older. We hate to admit it. My dog's 16. And sometimes you just don't want to admit that they're getting older. What can you do to help them? How to handle changes in your cat's behavior as they age. We'll take a look at that as well. Also, just had a conversation with my own doctor who has a brand new girlfriend. Yeah, my doctor has a new girlfriend, but is allergic to her cat. He wanted to know if there was anything he could do. Living with pets and allergies. Yes, it can be done. And also, why your dog should be trained with hugs and kisses, not spike collars and dominance. We'll talk about that as well. Plenty of time for your questions and comments. Lots of great pet stuff to give away. So if your pet happens to be humping, jumping, digging, totally not housebroken, chewing, your dog's suffering with separation anxiety, your cat's depressed, your dog hates other dogs, and some people take your dog out for a nice leisurely walk, and all of a sudden he sees another dog and he turns into Cujo or he believes that anything that moves in your house or outside of your house, he must chase, give me a call. 
That's what this show is all about. Helping you cope with your pets more than likely. Helping your pets cope with you. You know what? It's really not easy living with people. The phone number here at the Pet Show, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. The reason I'm laughing is someone said, hey, Warren, could you shave before the show? No, I, I'm, I'm actually trying to grow a beard. It's been a long time, maybe 20 years. So I think I'm going to grow a beard. I'm not sure yet, so I'm giving it a couple of days. So if you're looking at me at Facebook, I'm not that grubby. I just decided to see what a beard would look like uh, on me. That phone number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. Now, here's the bottom line. This is the question of the day. And I know it's going to provoke some arguments, but, you know, heaven forbid, we should ever argue here on the pet show. If a dog and a person need help, who would you help first? Who would you help first? Literally, if a dog and a person needed your help, who would you help first? Now, I had a major argument on several different occasions with the, one of the main hosts here on KRLA and, and even had this argument with Regis Philbin when I was doing the Regis show and Matt Lauer when I was doing the Today Show. And they said, of course, Warren, of course, no doubt about it. If a dog or a cat and a person is in danger and you only have the ability to save one, of course you would have to save the human being. You guys remember who you're talking to? You're talking to Warren. You're talking to me. Well, we're going to take a look at that. But I want to get your take on it. If a human being... Now, I know there's play on this, but let me give you a little bit of what I said, okay? My response was, listen, here's the deal. If, in fact, Benji or Boomer or Lassie or Rin Tin Tin or any dog or cat was in dire straits at the same time as Hitler... Osama bin Laden, or any other terrorist, of course the animal's going to be saved first. Always try to save them both. But that was my opinion. I took a lot of, a, a lot of uh, a flack for that. So I want to get your thing. You know, human being and an animal, you need to save one. Which one would you save? Give me a call, 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. Uh, we're going to get to the phones in just a second. Have a little technical issue, but I promise we'll get to them. Let me do this before anything else, Okay. If I know on the East Coast, I think it's raining, but if you're living in Southern California, it's going to be really, really, really hot today. And the best place for you and your pets during the heat of the day is inside your home, not outside. Um, keep them drinking water. Make sure those water bowls are full, not with ice water. A lot of people give their dogs ice water. There's no ice water in the natural. I get to see a wolf said, I'm not drinking that because there's no cubes in it. So the bottom line is cool, fresh water. Make sure you're providing shade for your pets as well. Use a misting hose if you have to, a kiddie pool, keep an eye on pets around water. Not all dogs know how to swim, by the way. If you're going to exercise your dogs, do me a favor and your dogs a favor. Either do it early in the morning or after the sun goes down. Never, ever, ever, ever leave your dogs in a car. If you're going shopping, you got to run into the store, leave your dog at home. Don't leave them in the car. That's important. And just remember, that light-colored dogs and cats, so even dark-colored dogs and cats, if they're out in the sun, they should be using some sunblock, but make sure you have sunblock specifically made for your pet because sunblock for people has PABA, which can be dangerous for your dogs as well. That's the bottom line. And if you see, if you see a dog in distress in a car, what do you do? A lot of people panic. I was arrested. Roosevelt Field, Nassau County, New York, 1982. Before any of these laws were passed, there were two dogs stuck in a car in a parking lot. I walked by, they were in distress. What did I do? <laughs> took off my shoe and broke the window. Went inside, took the dogs out. The person whose car it was with the dogs called the police. They came and they arrested me. I was let out a few hours later, but the bottom line is, here's the story. Most states now have laws, Good Samaritan laws, where if there's a baby, a child, or a senior, or a dog, or anything living in a car that's in distress, do it. You have the right to break in and do it. Always let the police know you're going to do it, but if you have to do it, just do it. I don't worry about the consequences if it's a matter of life and death. That's important. I mean, let me give you a few more little tips here, and I'll get right to the phone lines here. Um, if your dog does, in fact, have a heat stroke. These are some of the things you should look for. They might be restless, thirsty, heavy panting, lethargic, dark tongue or gums, vomiting, lack of coordination, even collapse, temperature over 104 degrees, 
cool your pet down. Best way to do it, again, not ice water that can put them in shock, just fresh cool water, put them in front of a fan, massage their legs. And even when they're getting a little bit better, you still want to make sure you get to the vet right away. Older dogs, younger dogs, animals with flat faces like pugs and Persian cats are more susceptible to the heat as well. So just use common sense. Also, and this is important, it used to drive me crazy when I lived in New York City. People would take their dog out for a walk on a really, really hot day, not understanding how hot the concrete and the asphalt gets. Here's my recommendation. Before you take your dog for a walk, take your shoes, take your socks off. You go for a little walk around the block, but burns your feet. Imagine what it's going to do to your dog's feet as well. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. Let's go to, uh, you know what, let me take a call from Rhonda. Hey, Rhonda, welcome to the pet show. Thank you. Hi. How are you doing today? Thank you. Fine. What can I do for you? Well, um, I'm a new grandmother, and I babysit my granddaughter, and they have a uh, dog, um, medium-sized to large dog. And when it's around the baby, she's 17 months old. When we put the dog in the backyard, there's a glass door, and when the baby goes up to the door and the dog sees her, she bars her teeth. She you know, she starts showing her teeth, and it's scary. What is and the rest? What is the rest of the dog's body? You know, dogs do smile sometimes. What does the rest of her body look like? Is the hair up? Is the tail stiff? What does she look like? Um. Well, it does look like smiling, but one time somebody did see the dog growling at the baby. Okay. Well, there's also different types of growls. Obviously, you okay. never, ever, ever leave an infant unsupervised with a dog. It's that simple. I don't care right. who the dog is. That's number one. Now, number two, let me ask you a question. How do you think the dog who's been living in the home for several years now, this new baby arrives, so I'm sure is adorable and cute, Grandma, and the dog is outside in the backyard. The baby's being held on the other side of the door where the dog has been living. Don't you think that would create a little animosity on the dog's part? Absolutely. Okay, so you want to make sure whenever the dog is around the baby, and I wrote articles for this for, for a Parents Magazine and, and Baby Talk Magazine, whenever the dog is around the baby, it must be an incredibly positive experience. As a matter of fact, with this baby, I'm sure there are people coming over that have never seen the baby before that want to ooh and ah over the baby. There should be a bag of toys at the front door, not for the baby, but for the dog. Everyone who now comes in that may used to, used to ooh and ah over the dog is now going to want ooh and ah over the baby. Everyone must stop, spend five or ten minutes playing with the dog. This way the dog's getting more attention, a special toy or a treat when people come in, a positive association with the dog. So don't put yourself in a situation where the dog and the baby are, uh, where the dog has to feel a little bit intimidated by the baby. Keep them together. Make sure the baby's around. Let the baby get involved with helping you feed the dog, giving the dog toys and treats, and you should be absolutely fine. Oh, terrific. Thank you so much. Listen, I'm going to send you something. I'm going to say, before I send you something, Rhonda, I want you to go to my website, thepetshow.com. There's an entire article there on what to expect from your pet when you're expecting. I did a whole segment on this on the Today Show many years ago, and it really is an important segment because I wish you would have contacted me actually even before the baby arrived, but now the baby's there. We got to deal with what we have, but there's some really good, interesting articles on the, uh, on the website, thepetshow.com, but check the one, what to expect from your pet when you're expecting. In the meantime, I am going to put you on hold, and I am going to say, Send you. you know what? I'm going to send you a coupon for kids and pets staying in order movement. I'll tell you why. The dog is doing fine now, but occasionally when a new baby arrives into the house, the dog says, well, if it's okay for the new thing to pee in the house, why can't I? So just in case there's any accidents, I'm going to send you a coupon for kids uh, and pets, uh, uh, kids and pets staying in order movement. I appreciate that phone call. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. I'm going to take a break. Before I do it, let me just remind you, you know, all the articles, all the videos on my website are free. Sure, you can buy stuff at the website like Hugs and Kisses, but if you have a question during the week, like we're having a new baby, what do I do? Some of these articles I had written for like a Parents Magazine or Baby Talk Magazine or Family Circle or Good Housekeeping, some of those articles are actually on the website. You can check them out and get some great information there. And the website is the petshow.com. Remember that teach the petshow.com. Quick break, then right back to your phone calls. The phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Hey, we're back on the Pet Show. I'm Warren next time. The phone number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. Of course, I have my own hugs and kisses, vitamin, mineral, supplement treats to give away. 
I got Lucy Pet Formulas for Life Pet Food to give away, Kids and Pet Stain and Odor Remover, those amazing T-shirts that say none of my friends walk upright, copies of my books, Lucy Pet's Cat's Incredible Cat Litter Author Suit Gold, Hemp Seed Oil Allergy Calming Immune and Joint Stuff as well. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. The phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Um, just before I get back to the phones, you know, I may be a little eccentric. Can you imagine that, Alex, that some people think that? I would never think that, but pretty much everyone who knows me thinks that. I love pigeons. Ever since I was a child, I would rescue them. I always loved pigeons. Yet when you live in New York City, pigeons are considered by many people rats with wings. Well, let me tell you something about pigeons and how smart they are. And when we're all gone, guess what? Pigeons will still be around. Pigeons can actually understand probabilities just like primates. That means you and me. One crumb or two, pigeons can actually work out their chances of getting the most food. Pigeons seem to have the innate ability to compute probabilities, the first primate or non-primate to show this. So next time you see a pigeon... <laughs> Don't think you're smarter than it because perhaps you are not. I've always loved pigeons. I don't know why. I just love watching them and, and the sounds of them cooing. Some people don't like them. I don't understand it. They're just wonderful, wonderful animals. Hey, the phone, I used to work with a pigeon rescue, believe it or not, a whole lot of them, but pigeon rescue on Long Island. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. So when you guys call in, you hear this lovely voice on the other end of the phone. No, it's not you, Alex, okay? Nor is it me. It's the lovely Suzette. So coming up in uh, the 42-minute break, when I break at 42, I'm going to bring Suzette and let her say hello to you. You'll get to see what Suzette looks like and, and get to see who that person you talk to on a regular basis. And you got to be nice to Suzette. Remember, she's the one who copies down all the information for the prizes I send out. So we'll take a, we'll, we'll be speaking to Suzette in just a little bit. Phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Let me get back to the busy phone lines here. Let's go to uh, Patricia in Reseda. Hey, Patricia, how are you? Fine, Warren, thank you. Um, and um, something, I wanted to tell a little story if you have time, but anyway. It depends how short the story is. I'm always short on time. So if it's a short story, go okay, ahead. Okay, but the... The first thing I'm saying is that there was another dog who was put in cargo, a little dog, I think it was a Pekingese or something little, and it perished in cargo. And um, when the man, you know, was obviously distraught about this and how did it happen, and he said, it's not just a pet, it's a member of the family. And my question was, what other member of your family would you have put in cargo? You don't ask me that question, Patricia. <laughs> I know. Well, let me tell you a little story, please. I was working on the phone, and somebody called up and wanted to know how much it would cost him to send an animal to St. Louis from San Diego. And I said, well, what kind? He said it was a 10-week-old kitten. I said, oh, that's horrible. Anyway, we got talking a little bit, and I said... Um, that if he was willing to drive to LAX, I would take the kitten for him in the cabin because I worked for an airline. And so here, I, we knew, neither one of us knew each other. Uh, so I met him at LAX and I took the lovely kitten to the people in St. Louis. Uh, I stayed overnight with them and came back the next day and um, so, um, you know, I think that a lot of people... Here's the bottom line, okay? Yeah. I've always had lots of dogs and lots of cats and snakes and birds and goats and pigs, okay? I personally would never, ever fly a pet of mine in cargo. I have driven, Denise can call in and verify, I have driven cross country in the last eight years, probably nine times, just because I would not fly pets. I just won't do it, yeah. something I would never do, because I hear the horror. So let me give you a little a little example here. I'm going to get to all your phones. Don't but go don't anywhere. you think that was, I mean. I, I was one, listen, I love you already. I'm going to adjust your halo, okay? But I want you to listen to me <laughs> no, carefully. I the, matter, the matter of trust on both sides. I right? just got an email this morning from a soldier from Guam. 
okay? You know, us veterans have a way of connecting with each other. Mm -hmm. He's been stationed in Guam, and in Guam, maybe the dogs aren't treated as well as they should be. He has this rescue mm -hmm. dog. He's ready to adopt it. He wants to bring him home. But the way our veterans, or the way our GIs are flown home is on commercial airlines. And because United Airlines just changed their rules and regulation, this dog that he rescued in Guam, he can't find its way to get it back to the United States. I'm working on it. I'm going to hook up with a friend of mine who does a lot of work with veterans, and hopefully we can do it. So it's insane to me. I don't understand it, but the bottom line is I personally would never, there was just another story last week about a bunch of uh, uh, rabbits that died in a cargo on a plane as well. So bottom line is if you got to go cross country, if you can figure out a way to drive, fine. If you can take the dog in the cabin with you, fine. If not, stay home. Right. Anyway, Patricia, don't go in. I'm going to put you on hold, and we're going to send Patricia. What are we going to send, Patricia? We're going to send Patricia. You love that. We're going to send you a T-shirt because you're such a lovely lady. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. Let me go to Jeanette in Costa Mesa. Hey, Jeanette, welcome to the show. Hi, Dr. Exton. Uh, you can call me Warren. That's fine. Warren, okay. <laughs> um, I called you a couple weeks ago uh, about my little Shih Tzu who was – was really having vibration problems and you told me it was environmental and you were absolutely right um and so i started looking around to see you know what what could make this happen because it was happening between 5 and 6 p.m it turns out there was a couple things um the tv was too loud and it and, and i shut it down and the vibration stopped immediately and I thought, that's too easy. <laughs> and so then I kept looking for um, more, more environmental stuff. And uh, I took, uh, I go to a chiropractor who does kinesiology. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but they, they muscle test you for any kind of problems you have in your body. And uh, they come up with a um, homeopathic remedy. So I, I took his collar to the... Um, to my chiropractor and he tested me, the dog through me, and he said he's got issues with his kidneys because of the chemicals. And I, I thought about that and he was right because my husband likes to fertilize our beautiful backyard all the time. We've got tons of plants. And so that made perfect sense to me. And he gave me a couple of homeopathic um, sprays to spray their mouth with three times a day, and honestly, it's, everything stopped. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad it's working. I just want you to check what you're spraying in the dog's mouth with your veterinarian as well. Oh, sure. She likes uh, homeopathic. Uh, yeah, no, the only reason I'm saying, I'm not sure to hear, but the only reason I say that is I believe, I believe it's state law. I may be wrong on this, and I'm a big fan. I've never been to a chiropractor, but I'm a big fan of what they've seen and the results I've seen with animals. Um, the, the, the bottom line is I just want to make sure, because I understand that, that the law is that a chiropractor uh, that treats animals, unless he's a, a veterinary chiropractor, uh, must work under the supervision of a veterinarian. So I'm hoping they're working together. But that's great to well, hear. They, they wouldn't, well, wait, wait, the, there's one more little Guys. to my puzzle here he he said he used to uh, see the dog personally but he said now too many other of their customers had allergies to animals so they stopped that but uh that's why i brought the collar in however i've got another the little brother to this guy um they're both little shih tzus uh has allergy problems and his skin turns pink because he licks and it licks his paws and itches. Yeah, lot, I just so. quick, Jen, I got to I got to take a hard break here. So quickly, what's your question? Okay, well, the allergy he's got allergies. Uh, is it a deficiency in vitamins and stuff? It could be. You know what? I'm going to send you a special product. I'm going to put you on hold. I'm going to send you something made by my good friends over at NatureVet. It's a brand new product they have. It's hemp seed oil based, and there's one product made specifically for allergies. So Suzette will get that information, and we'll send you some of that NatureVet hemp seed oil uh, to calm down those allergies. Let's see if that works. It's a natural way to approach it. And I appreciate the phone call. Hey, the phone number here at the Pet Show. Great time to give me a call. Lots of great stuff to give. Away. As you know, many of the items to give away are 25, 35, 40 bucks and more. 866 870 KRLA, 866 870 5752, 866 870 5752. That is the way to get through. Plenty of time for calls, lots of great stuff to give away. The question of the day is if a dog or person needed help, who would you help first? 
I'll give you my answer when we come back. Hey, the phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. I'm just laughing at myself because when I bought my car last year, and I live in California now, they must have thought I lived in back in New York because it has a heated seat. Why would you ever need a heated seat? I would never have bought a heated seat in a car, but yet my car, my butt stays warm and it gets a little chilly here in California. We get back to the busy phone lines here on the pet show. We are going to, oh God, so many great calls here. Uh, I don't even know where I want to go here. Uh, you know what? Let me take Danielle first. I'm going to get to all your calls, I promise. Let me go to Danielle in Fontana. Hey, Danielle, welcome to the show. How you doing, Warren? I'm doing great. Let me let me ask you a question. I see from my screen that you have a cat that has mange. Yeah. Demodetic or sarcoptic? I'm not sure. Well, okay, it really makes a difference because... Uh, sarcoptic is, is, is more contagious, demodetic, not so contagious to people. So what you need to do at this point is you need to get the dog checked by a vet. He's probably going to give you some type of medicated uh, uh, soap for the cat. Or, or did you, has you, Have you ever bathed your cat before? Uh, no, we just got it. Really? You just, where'd you get the cat from, Dan? Uh, we, I got it from a uh, rescue. Oh, so you took the cat from a rescue, and did they know the cat had mange when you took it? I'm not sure. Uh, out here in uh, Lake Elsinore, California. Where, where'd you say I didn't hear you? Uh, Lake Elsinore. California. Oh, sure. I know Lake Elsinore well. I rode my motorcycle there many times. My big question to you is this, though. I would contact the rescue. Did you contact them and let them know that the, dog, the cat know. is... That's the first thing you need to do because many of the rescues work with veterinarians and have veterinarians that will give discounts or, or guide you. So the fact that you adopted the dog, God bless you for doing that. But I think at this point, the rescue that adopted the, do the dog, adopted the cat to you, should really guide you and help you in terms of caring for this mange. Because as I said, it depends on the type of mange. Do you have other pets in the household with you? Uh, yeah, one more, one cat. Yeah, well, that's why, that's why it's important to get it taken care of. We don't want the mange to go from one cat to the other or to go for you. But it depends on the type of mange it is. There's a cut, you know, there's demodetic, there's sarcoptic. So you want, you want to speak to a vet. But the first thing I would do is I would contact the rescue group that you rescued the cat from. Let them know that the cat has mange. Let them see how they're going to help you and guide you to their veterinarian. Can I ask you one more thing? Sure, go ahead. Okay, my, my brother, uh, he uh, goes around and the cat lays in his bed. And my brother found out uh, a couple of days ago that uh, he has some kind of a, a parasite or a, a bug on him, and he, he's breaking out like a red little uh, rash. Well, the, the cat stays in the bed with him, so they, it tells you that whatever the cat has, your brother didn't have it beforehand. He's only had it since the cat arrived. You don't have to be Kreskin, the amazing Kreskin, to figure out that the reaction your brother's having is probably due to some type of situation with the cat. So. <laughs> Uh, there's a little red bumps on it. Yeah, that's, it could be mange. It could be fleas. I don't know what it is, but you need to get the cat looked at by a veterinarian, uh, Daniel. Okay. All right, listen, thanks for calling. I bless you for taking this cat in. I'm going to put you on hold, and we are going to send you – I don't know if I can send this anymore, but I'm going to try to send it to you. You know what? Uh, we're going to try to send him, Suzette, some all-natural herbal flea spray, okay? Uh, all-natural herbal flea spray in case it is fleas, but don't just treat it that way. It could be some type of mange. I want you to have it checked out by the veterinarian. And call the rescue group. Sometimes they have the funding or the relationship with a veterinarian, which can save you a lot of money in the long run. Hey, the phone number here at the Pet Show, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Gloria and Santa Ana, I'm going to get to you. I'm going to get to you, Dollar. I'm going to get to you, Danielle. Don, we'll get to all your calls. Great time to call me. I'm going to take a break right now. That's probably the best time to get through to the show. The phone number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Uh, lots of great stuff to give away. As I said, many of the items are worth 25 35 40 bucks or more. So I'm going to take a break. During the commercial, those people on Facebook, don't go anywhere because – I'm actually going to introduce you to the lovely Suzette Kirby, who is my producer, coffee maker, screener. This is the wonderful woman you talk to when you call up. So be nice there. She's the one who sends out the gift. So let me take a quick break. Then we'll get right back to your phone calls. Great time to call me. The phone number 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away as well. Um, let me do this. I'm all confused here now. All right, what I'm, I'm doing, Lucy Pet, right now? All right, that's what I'm doing right now. I want to help. No.
give me a second, folks. It doesn't often happen to me, but sometimes I do really get confused, and I don't want to be confused. I'm looking for my commercials here. If you're watching on Facebook, I hope you're all having a good laugh because Warren's blowing it here. But let me just look, look, look. look, look, look. Where is it? I can't find my commercial. Uh, let's do this, folks. You know why I couldn't find it? You want to know why I couldn't find it? Because I pulled it out and it's sitting right in front of me. We'll do a quick break, then right back to your phone calls. The phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Okay, so you guys have been asking me, tell me something about Suzette. So Suzette is here. Suzette is my producer, screener, and the person, the person you talk to. So Suzette, tell them something. Say something. Hi, everybody. Okay, tell um, how amazing it is working. With oh, it's you. amazing. Yeah, I love working with Warren, working with Alex. Uh, the whole team here is just awesome. So I've been uh, working with Warren for a little over three years. So, um, you know, I love taking all your calls. I enjoy talking to you, and I'm glad. Uh, you know, Warren's here to to help answer any questions and, you know, to help our, our animal friends. So uh, thank you for listening, too. Keep listening. Thank you. So there really is a person. And I would show you Alex. But, you know, I'll show you Alex the next hour. He's a little shy. So I'll take the camera. Thank you, Suzette. Okay. Okay. Be nice to Suzette. As I said, she's the one to write your name down. Without Suzette, you don't get a gift. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Suzette. Ah, oh, blue comes. We're back on the pet show. I got all my papers straightened out. We're ready to go. We got a whole other hour to go. The phones are full, jam packed. I guess I should take another phone call. That's what my job is. So let's go to let's go to Gloria. And I am so confused today. Let's go to Gloria. And I had a good night's sleep for a change. I think that's the problem. Let's go to Gloria and Santa Anne. Hey, Gloria, welcome to the pet show. Hi, Warren. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to tell you that I took in a pregnant stray cat from my backyard when she was about to deliver, put her in my bathroom. She had six kittens and I've raised them and I want to give credit to Cats in Need, a lady named Mary helped me out in taking five of them when they were nine weeks old to, to go to PetSmart and be adopted. And um, it's a good, finally, a good success story because the mother cat terrified my big male cat and he had to hide in a corner. But uh, now they've made their peace. And so I have the mother and my male cat and one little kitten left. So out of the kittens that were born, you kept the mother cat, you kept one of the kittens, and the rest of the kittens were, uh, were taken uh, to, by, by a group called Cats in Need? Yes, Here, yes. Gloria, here's I what I'd like you to do. Mother cat spades. So yeah. That's Good. Here's what I'd like you to do, though, Gloria. Listen to me. What I'd like you to do is have the group from Cats and Knee contact my office. I'd oh. love to. I'd love to support them a little bit, or, or if they're doing any events or anything, uh, they can simply go to uh, mail at thepetshow.com, mail at thepetshow.com, and they can send me a note. And I'd love to get information on their organization because we try to help as many organizations as we possibly can. Oh, how lovely. Yes, yes. They were they were very lovely. And um, I helped give them worm pills and weigh them. And and they were going to pay for the neutering the next day and uh, get them up for adoption. Well, you make sure they contact me. I'd love to have a little chat with them. I'd love to kind of help them out if I can. So that's what I'm doing. In the meantime, i got to move on, but I'm going to put you on hold. And I am going to send Gloria for saving those wonderful cats. You know what? Let's keep those cats as healthy as happy as we possibly can. Who knows what type of nutrition the mother cat had before she was pregnant. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to send you some Lucy Pet Formulas for Life pet food. Nothing better. You can feed the cats, introduce the new food gradually, take out the old food, and eventually you'll be on Lucy Pet Formulas for Life. And you know what? You'll have the healthiest three, healthiest three cats you've ever had. So we're going to send you some Lucy Pet's uh, uh, Pet formulas for life, pet food for your cat. And I really appreciate the call. But better yet, I appreciate the fact that you did something. You know, we can't all do it all, but everyone can do something. Hey, the phone number here, 866-870-KRLA. I got a minute a little before I got a break. Let me go to Darla. I guess it's Pennsylvania. Hey, Darla, welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing there? I am doing great. What can I do for you? I just want to say how much I appreciate watching your show here on Facebook. I've been watching it for a couple months now. And I just I really appreciate it. I like the tips you give. I've been, whenever I come on, I hit the share thing and I invite my friends to watch it. 
And uh, I was telling a friend uh, about uh, a couple weeks ago, you had mentioned you were in on closing down some kill shelter in California. Yeah, we're trying to. Yeah, when well, she said that you, you are her hero if you do that. Well, I'm not, we're not trying to close it down. What I'm trying to do is make the changes that are necessary so right. that the animals that are kept there, you know, shelter means uh, taking Super care tech. of. Exactly. And so I just want to make sure whatever animals go to a shelter, and there's one specific shelter here in California. I don't know what the problem is, but I've been hearing about it. Hey, Darla, I got to take a break, but I want to send you something. So let me do this. I'm going to put you on hold, Darla, right. and I am going to send you, you know, because you're such a brag about my show and you like my show and you live in, in beautiful uh, Fort City, Pennsylvania, I'm going to send you one of my T-shirts that say none of my friends walk upright, and I appreciate that phone call. Let me take a quick break. When I come back, we got Don in Canoga Park. We got Mark in Los Angeles, Andy in Studio City, uh, Mary in Woodland Hills. We'll get to all your calls. Great time to call me. Lots of great stuff to give away. You know, it's interesting because the question of the day, which kind of everyone's staying away from, is if a dog or person needed help, who would you help first? I had a disagreement, actually an argument, actually a discussion with someone who's a major host here at the radio station. Actually, I had this argument with him at another radio station we worked at together here in Southern California. His response was, you know, if a human being and an animal is dying, Warren, and a dog is dying and they're drowning, of course you have to jump into the water and save the person first. My response was, listen to me, if the person is Osama, Osama bin Laden, if the person is Hitler, if the person is Stalin, you know what? The dog is coming out first and that person's going to drown because I'm not jumping in to help him. Agree with me or disagree with me? Human being and an animal will need to help. Who would you save? I want to know. 866-870-KROA, the phone number, 866-870-870. 5752-866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away as well. Again, that number, 866-870-KROA. I don't know what's happening with my papers today, Alex. My, my papers are all over the place. Let me do a quick break. And it's my own spot, so if I blow it, it's okay. Let me do a commercial for hugs and kisses. Then I want to get back to all your phone calls. 866-870-KROA. You know, some shows are a little bit easier. I'm not going to sleep that much anymore. I got eight hours sleep. No more. I cut myself back to five. I've got like two minutes left before we break for the top of the hour. So what I'd rather do is then, then squeeze everybody in. If you could just kind of hold on, give your pets a hug and a kiss, give them a treat, grab a cup of coffee. Right after the break, we have Don coming up. We have Monty coming up. We have Mark coming up. We got Andy coming up. We got Mary coming up. We'll get to all your calls. Still got some great stuff to give away. I got the hugs and kisses to give away, the Lucy Pet Food to give away, Stain and Odor Remover, T-shirts, books, Cat's Incredible, Cat Litter, Author Suit Gold, Mushroom Max, a Hemp Seed Oil for Allergies, Calming Immune and Joint. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away as well. Also, there's a big event coming up. It's a great event. You know, I don't get the opportunity, not the opportunity. I don't go to too many events, but there's an event coming up. I want you to write this date down. June 4th. That's Sunday, June 24th, not June 4th, Sunday, June 24th, 1 to 4 p.m. Just mark that down today. My good friend, Geraldine Gilliland, who's involved with Chiquita's Friends, is having an incredible fundraiser. It's on a Sunday, so I'll be there. And if you enjoy margaritas, if you enjoy good vegetarian, vegan food, and you want to meet some incredible dogs and some amazing people at a winery, I'll give you more information coming up a little bit later. But mark that date down, June 24th. 1 to 4 p.m. It's a Sunday. Uh, we'll talk more about that a little bit later in the next hour. And also, uh, uh, Jerry Gilliland will join me uh, next week or the week after. I'm not sure. Uh, she'll be with me on the air talking a little bit more about it. Incredible group of people. Uh, and if you want more information, you go to my website, thepetshow.com. But we'll talk more about this a little bit later. I'm so excited about this event coming up. The phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Plenty of time for your calls. We've got lots of great stuff to give away. Let me just take a minute or two break for the top of the hour, then right back to your phone calls. Lots of stuff to give away, 866-870-KRLA. And answer the question of the day. Are you guys afraid to answer this, or is it just me that maybe I'm that eccentric where I believe this way? If a dog or person needed help, who would you help first? the dog or the person, or does it depend on who the person is? Give me a call. Let me know. Great gift will be on its way. 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. I'm Warren Eckstein. This is The Pet. Warren Eckstein, the man for your pets. We try to stumble, but we haven't yet. dog is barking, your cat is the fox. Your ferret's chewed up all your favorite socks. You should know how to get Inside your pants, 
And if you love animals, care about wildlife and the environment, and really want to understand how your dogs and cats think, <laughs> what they think about you, you've come to the right place. I'm Warren Eckstein. You're listening to uh, America's first and only real pet psychology training behavior, and of course, pet lifestyle show. They're part of a family, so they're part of our life. Got a question, got a comment, great time to give me a call. That phone number, 866-870-KRLA. If the phones are busy like they are right now, keep trying. We'll get to your calls, I promise. Now, the question of the day here on the pet show is pretty simple. The question of the day was, if a dog and a person needed help, who would you help first, the dog or the person? My response has always been, depends on the person. But this is what prompted that question. New studies show that humans, that's you and me, humans love dogs more than other humans. What if a human and a dog stood side by side and both needed help, but you could only choose one? It wouldn't be an easy decision, would it? Some studies reveal when it comes to feeling empathy, many people pick their dogs over other people. Does that surprise you? Sociologists and anthropologists from Northeastern University and the University of Colorado pondered why. I'll tell you why. They're honest. They don't lie. They don't cheat. I get to have a dog borrow 10 bucks and not pay me back. That's the way I feel about animals. Ever since I was this big, I mean, I've been, you know, when I was a little kid, I grew up in a little town called Oceanside, Long Island. Not so little. Beautiful area. I got some people from Oceanside that are on a, my Facebook right now. It's a great place to grow up. It's like, you know, Leave it to Beaver, a great neighborhood. But behind my house, and I write about this in my autobiography, was a, was a, a little creek with all types of little animals and critters in there. My house was a typical Long Island Jewish household, which means that there were never less than 25 people in the house. Couldn't deal with it. So I would hang out in the creek with the animals. And that's where my affinity towards animals started and continued right through my life and will continue till the very end. That I promise. I love you guys, but I enjoy the company of animals. Call me crazy. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number 866-870-5752. Let's go to Don in Canoga Park. Hey, Don, welcome to the Pet Show. Good afternoon. How are you today? Fine, thank you. I'm uh, doing great. What can I do for you? I'm moving to another part of the country, and I'm trying to, I'm going to get, I want to get my dog acclimated to... Uh, the part of the country I'm moving in, and because uh, we've been living in an apartment now, she has a big backyard. So how can I do that to get her not to be afraid? Well, Don, where where are you moving to? Tennessee. Why? No, I'm just joking. I love Tennessee, and you know you can hear me in Tennessee. One of my biggest stations is located in Tennessee. So when I get off the air here, once you move to Tennessee, guess what? You're not going to get rid of me, Don. You're still going to have to yeah. listen to the pet show. Let me tell you what you need to do. Who's in that house now that you're going to be moving to? Anybody? No one is there now. Okay. Is, do you have a friend or a relative in that neighborhood? I have, I have a nephew who's there, and he's taking, he's looking after it. He has a small dog also, and I, I want to know, can we get them acclimated to each other, or do I put them in a playpen? A play well, what you first thing you need, well, the first thing you need to do is when you introduce the two dogs to each other, I want you to introduce, well, it's going to be neutral territory either way. Now, there's going to be a lot of stress for your dog going to a new location, so here's my recommendation, okay? The first yeah. thing I would do is send your nephew in Tennessee some articles of your clothing that's unwashed, maybe some of the dog's bedding, rub some stuff on it to get his scent to the house all over, uh, make sure you take a, a towel and wipe it on his bed, send that down there, and if you can actually, before you move, what if you can actually send his bed, his food dish, and all his toys to the new location, that would be really beneficial. So now, when, when you, Don, move across country to Tennessee, um, the dog goes into the new home, and there's a lot of stress with the new home, but at least the anxiety level is diminished because the same smells are there. Your unwashed clothing, his wow. food, his toys, his, his, his bed, all of that is there. That's number one. Number two, try to pick a time where you have three, four days with nothing to do but hang out with the dog. What I would try to do, how does your dog get along with other dogs as a rule? <laughs> She's cool inside the house, outside. She sees another dog and Katie by the door. Okay, and how about the how about your nephew's dog? I haven't. She's never met the dog yet. No, but how does your nephew's dog generally get along with other dogs? Yeah, they're supposed to be. Yeah, but we'll see how that works. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Hey, yo, yeah, supposed to be, but we'll see how that works. It's my dog. She's the one who, uh, all of a sudden, she's nice inside, calm as a mouse. Okay, so what she's I'd like you to do here's here's what I want you to do. When you get down there, uh, is your nephew going to be living in a home with you? No, no, no. He's living. Uh, 
Okay. Okay. In the neighborhood, but meet the dogs. Friends. Meet the dog. Let the dogs meet. You walk your dog. Let him walk his dog. Make it a positive relationship. Let him know the name of the dog. Let them, you know, walk them past each other a few times. Let them get to know each other from a distance. Little by little, get closer and closer. And then you can make the actual introduction. I I'm going to send you a copy of my book because it's really important. I want you to read about the, the first pet psychology. And you hate it. this is like the double header for you. It's like you just did double jeopardy. I'll tell you why. Because not only are you going to get in the book uh, uh, what to do in terms of when you move to a new home, but also also that introduction to the dog. I did a chapter in there also about moving from one location to the other. So follow my advice. It should work out perfectly. Where in Tennessee are you moving to? Uh, Nashville. Ah, beautiful Nashville, huh? Yeah, nice and peaceful and quiet. Peaceful and quiet. I spent time in Nashville, spent time in Memphis. Great state, great city. Anyway, Lon, listen, Don, don't go anywhere. I'm going to put you on hold. The lovely Suzette's going to pick up. We're going to send you a copy of How to Get Your Dog to do what you want. And I want you to read the chapter specifically on first pet psychology on moving from one location to the other. See, this is why I continue doing the show. This show has been on now for 33 years. And one of the reasons is so many people will call me up and they've never even thought about what's going to happen if I move to a new location. They think about the stress and anxiety going on in their lives. They don't necessarily think about the stress and anxiety of the move going on in their dog's life. Even when you move, now I've moved several times. When you move, when you're packing up, get your dog involved, get your cat involved, let them know, let them sniff around the boxes, the snoo the suitcases. Talk to them. Say, you move into a new location, you have a bigger backyard, more friends, it's going to be great. I know that sounds a little crazy to people, but take it from me. They understand what you're saying. So make the move as easy for you and as easy for your pets as possible. 866-870-KRLA, that is the phone number. Let's go to Mark in Los Angeles. Hey, Mark, welcome to the pet show. Hey, Warren, how you doing? I'm doing super. What's up? Okay, uh, this is about cats. I have two cats. They're uh, brother and sister, female and male. The female is a little bit older, but I noticed that she was starting to drool. Well, if you say on, that, bro whoa, 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 let me stop you. The brother and sister, how could one be older? Oh, well, well. Different litter, different litter. Oh, okay. Well, you, know, you say brother and sister. I'm assuming the same litter. So I'm saying, well, how could the same well, litter like, be? You know, uh... Okay. Right. Okay, but what? Okay, but which guy is the the older one is starting to drool a little bit. It was drooling? It's drooling now. The the brother is drooling. So is that what causes that? Well, that... it could be any number of things that can cause drooling. Generally speaking, if you have, did you have any lawn work done recently? Any fertilizer put down on the lawn? An exterminator? Anyone come to your house? Did anything different go on in your home recently? No, but we did receive it a couple of years ago. But well, they both like being in the yard. Well, being in the, I can understand them like being in the yard, but I'm trying to get to the, the, the why are they drooling the way they are. If, in fact, yeah. there's no changes in the house, there's no chemicals, not a new cleanser, not a new this, not a new that, then no. my next guess, and I want you to take them to the vet because here's why. 85 to 90% of cats will develop some type of dental or periodontal disease by the time they're three or four years old. So it's very, very okay. possible that there's some dental problem going on in both of them. It's very possible there's some periodontal problems. So let's get it checked by the vet. Maybe okay. he's going to want to clean the teeth. It sounds to me like that's probably causing the drooling is pain, but I want the vet to check it just in case there's something you're missing, maybe a new fertilizer or something the neighbors put down, maybe some blew over to your okay. yard. So I want you to check that, but it sounds to me like it's more of a, a dental problem at this point. Yeah, a dental problem. Okay, very good, Warren. Thank hey, you. Don't go in there. Let me do this. I'm going to put you on hold, and I am also going to, you know what? I'm also going to send you a um, a, a gift certificate for the uh, the uh, Kids and Pets Stain and Odor Mode. The reason I'm sending it to you, because if they're drooling and their drool gets on the carpet, it can stain. So we'll send you some of that, and I appreciate the phone call. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. What the phones are jam-packed. We're going to try to get to as many calls as we can. We're going to go to, I believe it's Mary in Woodland Hills. Hey, Mary, welcome to the Pet Show. Hi, can you hear me? Absolutely, like you're right next oh, okay, to me. What's up? I'm on speaker. Uh, first of all, I want to say that this, I would absolutely, positively re rescue an animal over an evil person. Uh, there you go. My thoughts entirely. Absolutely. And I thank you for the call. I have a 13-year-old cat who's got long hair. Uh, he's constantly scratching from behind his ears and kind of all over. And it kind of, and they leave small crusty sores now the last time he did this back in uh last year i took him to the vet and of course they gave him injections and stuff they gave him my and prednisone my thing, a cortisone my thing is i don't want that and you mentioned something about hemp seed for allergies for pets 
Yeah, I, you know, I am a big fan and becoming a bigger fan of hemp seed oil and CBD for cats as well as people. I've heard the response. I've seen some people swear by it. So what I'm going to do is let's try this. You know, my good friends over at NatureVet, which, by the way, is an incredible company. They have been, Scott and his company have been sponsors of my show for God knows ever since I was 11, no, for over 20 years. And when, when it's made by NatureVet, you know you're getting a product that I believe in. So they came out with just recently, within the last couple of months, they came out with their hemp seed oil products. There's one for allergies. There's one for calming. There's one for the immune system. And there's one for joint. So I don't know if it's allergies or not. But what I'd like to do is send you some hemp seed oil and uh, from NatureVet and uh, follow the instructions. And I'd love you to give me a call back and let me know how it's working after a few weeks. I would love that now, but I have one other quick question. Sure, go ahead. What, what is CBD? CBD is part of, of the, the it, it's entirely different than the, oh God, how do I explain this to somebody? Than the hemp? Yeah, it's, the difference is hemp oil is grown for agricultural, has very low THC, which marijuana for recreational has much higher THC. So I, I promise you, you're not going to come home and, and your, uh, your pet is not going to be, your cat's not going to be lying on his back uh, looking at posters of Jimi Hendrix, okay? Um, but, so so it, it, doesn't have, it doesn't have very much THC in it. It's CBD. Um, the, the success rate I've seen is pretty amazing. In fact, there's some tests going on right now, but if it's made by nature that you know you're getting a great product. So let me send you some, then call me back in a few weeks and let me know how you're doing. Thank you so I don't much. Want you take, I don't want you taking it yourself though, okay? <laughs> It's not going to do anything anyway. Just joking with you. Anyway, we're going to put you on hold. The lovely Suzette's going to pick up. Suzette, we're sending her some Nature's Vet hemp seed oil for allergies, and I do appreciate that phone call. If I can get my papers right here, let me take a break, and we'll get right back to the phone calls. We got The phones are busy. We got Monty. We got Andy. We got Lisa. We got Dan. Get to all your calls, I promise. I'm looking at my Facebook feed, and I see that my friend Gary from beautiful Lincoln, Nebraska, Checking in, say, looking a little scruffy. I'm debating whether to grow a bit. So, then Gary, be nice to me, Gary. I'm going to be broadcasting July, July 20th, I believe, from Omaha, Nebraska. 21st, is that what the 21st from Omaha, Nebraska. Lincoln's not too far away, so Gary, be nice. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Hey, Monty, welcome to the Pet Show. Hey, how you doing, Warren? I could not be doing better. What's up? Hey, uh, as you know, th this is Monty with For Veterans Sake. Oh, my good friend Monty. I, I, you like the only Monty I know. I should have known, Monty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just want to give you a heads up. We um, just had a major breakthrough, and, you know, we're on the front lines of PTSD and using dogs yeah. to uh, uh, help with that. Well, after Saxon passed away a couple years ago, the dog that I rescued, the shepherd that was left tied to a fence post to die, um, we have trained her up, her sensory perception so much that – here in the last year, she has been reacting and responding differently with many of the veterans we were working with. So through process of elimination, we we're trying to figure out what it is she's responding to differently. And it turns out it's a thyroid issue, which mimics PTSD in many ways, sleep apnea, depression, weight gain, things like that. Well, we contacted our friends that travel with us sometimes over at Johns Hopkins University, and they came out to Texas where we were at. And we introduced them to a lot of the veterans that Lily was, Lily's the dog in question, that we was responding to them differently. So they worked with them, uh, did a lot of testing, a uh, lot of interviewing. They went back to the VA, pulled those records, were working with them. And they came back and said, not only was Lily correct, she was 100% on the money. And you know, Monty, it doesn't surprise me, and I'll tell you why. Over the years, in my experience working with dogs all over the world, whenever I notice a change in personality of the dog or, or just a different way the dog is reacting, one of the first things I ask the vet to do is check the dog's thyroid. And generally speaking, if we have a friendly dog that all of a sudden is reacting a different way, sometimes it's a thyroid situation. So it just makes sense. It could be the same thing with people. And, you know, having trained the first dog, and this is, I'm going back, what, 1973, the first dog to detect seizures in the country, th their ability to detect things, doesn't. I don't doubt it at all, Monty, and I'm so glad you were able to find that out. Oh, yeah. And what they're what they're tying it to, uh, they're putting a grant together right now so they can further the research. And what now what we're going on right here is just speculation. But what they're going off of, 
they believe it's tied to the inoculations they're giving all of our veterans before they go overseas. Those air, those and, those air shots. Remember those air shots? No needle, oh, yeah, just those oh, air yeah. shots. And, oh, it doesn't hurt, Warren. Can, Don't worry, it's not going to hurt. We only got to give you five more shots. Doesn't hurt my butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only thirty of them. Yeah, there you go. But but anyways, they're uh, you know we're it's just speculation right now, but they're putting the grant together so they if they can tie that. You know, that's going to be a major breakthrough because yeah. we've been beating the drum that they're handing out PTSD diagnoses too easily. Yeah. And they need to be a little bit more in search of the right remedies instead of, oh, you got PTSD and treat that. Um, but anyways, I just want to pass that on to you. No, you that's know, great news, Monty. Keep, this, yeah, so. keep me posted. Give me, give me a shout out during the week. And the next time you're in LA, I'd love you to come into the studio with me with, uh, with one of the service dogs. Oh, you betcha. You betcha. Next time you're now, I definitely want you to do that. So that I think that would just be uh, absolutely fantastic. And let me know when those new T-shirts come out for your group, because I'd love to talk about them on the show. I'm sure some of my listeners would love to pick them up. Helping dogs and veterans at the same time. What can get better? You betcha. I'll be in touch. All right, Monty. You take care. You have a great day. You too. Bye-bye Bye. now. What a great guy, Monty. He does an awful, he does an awful lot of work uh, helping veterans with PTSD. I, I met him several years ago when I was broadcasting from the, uh, the USS Iowa, and hopefully he'll come into the studio one time. And just amazing dog. The last dog I, I, I met with Monty was a dog that actually uh, did a lot of incredible work in Afghanistan. Um, actually, a lot of great work uh, was, was shot, was blown up. And we'll, we'll talk, when, when he comes on the air with me, we'll talk to, to Monty a little bit more. Hey, great time to give me a call. The phone number 866-870-KRLA. By the way, Monty has a great organization. You can go to my website and check it out, thepetshow.com. Uh, most of the dogs he gets, in fact, I believe all the dogs he gets come out of shelters and he, and he works with veterans all across the United States and just does absolutely amazing work. And, you know, there are some times, um, there are some times that you meet someone in life that really walks the walk. Uh, Monty is one of those people. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Uh, let me go to uh, Studio City. Hey, Andy, welcome to the Pet Show, Andy. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing super. What's up? Well, uh, let me get right to the point. I have a beautiful uh, Maltese Shih Tzu mix. She listens like like a soldier unbelievable and you just call her name she comes to you she'll do whatever you want and she'll interpret stuff she's very smart and the whole thing i have one problem with that little girl though and that is she when, she, when we first got her when she was like just a few weeks old and it was a battle to get her to come out on a walk i mean i used to have to drag her you know by the leash to get out once she got out you know she enjoyed it obviously and now that she's about three years old, she, even now when I say, let's go for a walk, she goes run to hide behind the couch. Or if I grab the leash, she, you know. Where did you get the dog from, Andy? A store. A show, she was at a store. And how old yeah. was she when you got her? A few weeks. Okay, so the bottom line is the dog came from a puppy mill, right? We're somewhere in the Midwest yeah. down south. So the That's dog right. came from a puppy mill. So the first thing that happened to this dog when she was picked up by somebody, she was taken away from the other litter mates, taken away from her mother, shoved into a cage in horrible conditions, sent yeah. to a pet store in horrible conditions. Then she winds up at your home. So every time you go to take her outside, because dogs learn through association, her association is possibly, you know what? If I go outside, I may never come back inside again That's, to this place yeah. that I love. That's the feeling I get. That's and, exactly. And go home. You should see when we're getting close to him, she tugs at me that she. Yeah, that's exact. That's exact. That's what the difference between therapy and training. This is my job is to try to figure out the cause yeah. and then the resolution. So how do we resolve right. this? What we need to do right now is I would recommend that you have some. What's your dog's name? Lola. Do you, does Lola have some good friends, people she loves? Yeah, well, us. You know. No, no, forget about you. I mean, real people. <laughs> dogs. Yeah, no, no, friends, neighbors, kids in the neighborhood, anything like that. Yeah, there's some people she likes. She likes I, all people. Well, but what I would try to do is what I would try to do is maybe five, six times a day, you know, put a collar and harness on her, not a collar, a uh, harness and a leash, not a collar. Put a harness on her. Just go outside, sit on the stoop, have someone come over who already knows her, give her a treat, play with her, then go back into the house. I want her to okay. associate even for really short periods of time. When she's oh, taken outside, she automatically comes back into the house. I see what you yeah, If see what every saying. time she goes out, it's a positive experience, and it's a short positive experience, and then she goes back into the house. Guess what, Andy? She's not going to be fearful about going outside anymore. And that, this is exactly why every puppy mill, 
everyone, and believe me, I don't want to get too deep into when I was an investigator, but I, I yeah. many, many tears, many, many nights stayed awake when I would investigate puppy mills on the East Coast in Pennsylvania uh, many, many years ago. They should all be closed down. These people are insane. They're crazy. They're abusive. They're nuts. They should not be well, doing it. So the bottom line is when you get a dog from a puppy mill, and, and you did it, and I'm not going to go back and say, you know, you should have adopted, but you have the dog yeah. now. This is yeah. very, very common with dogs that come out of those situations well, besides medical reasons and socialization reasons. This is exactly what we need to do. We have to desensitize her and let her know that going out means something good's going to happen and you're coming right back inside where you're really comfortable. Okay. Let, me get, Go ahead. Well, let me get to really my most important question I have for you related to the walk. When The bottom line is when she goes to the bathroom, she does it on the sidewalk. She never goes on the lawn. Well, she was in a How cage, but she was message? in a cage. How do I get the message to her? She was in a cage probably with concrete underneath it. She yeah. never had the opportunity of going on grass, so she has no idea what that's right. all about. Here's what you need to do. The next okay. time she pees and poops on the, on the concrete, yeah. I want you to dab up some of the urine in a paper towel. I want you to pick yeah. up the poop, okay? I want you okay. to take that urine and take that poop, put it in your backyard in a couple of different places under a half inch of grass and dirt. Don't give her the opportunity to go for a walk. Let her out in the yard. She will pick up the scent of her poop and pee there, and she'll probably start to go. May take a day or two, but I promise you, once she goes there, she'll get the idea that this is okay and a tremendous amount of praise at the same That's time. That's the problem. I have an apartment. Do they, do, well, where would you walk away? There would be grass. Well, right outside the apartment, there's plenty of grass. Okay, so what I would do is let the neighbors know, and maybe the landlord know, because I don't want you to get a ticket that you're putting poop down. Yeah, but what yeah, I want yeah, you to yeah. do is take the poop, move it over, before you even let her, let her poop that first time, move it over to that area, take her back inside, and the next time she's ready to go out, take her to that same location, but walk her on okay. the grass. Don't let her go on the okay. concrete. Okay, now this, let me tell you, she never walks on the lawn. She's not interested in the lawn. She only stays on the concrete, so I just pull over to that area, I guess? But you're making a negative experience. The dog has to go to the bathroom if you, she's already anxious and she's not going to go. Oh. Pick her up. Right. Listen to me. Pick her up, put her in the car, take her to a park, spend the day at the park with her. Well, that's a good idea, yeah. That's my job. All right, spend the day at the park with her. I want her to get the idea that going on grass is okay. She'll pick up all the scents of other dogs. That might help her. But all of her problems, all of her problems were related to the fact that she's a puppy mill yeah. dog, and, and yeah. you did so it. So you mean take, take the poop and the peep and put it in the park area? Yeah, take a bag of pee and poop, put it, put it in your trunk, and then before you take her out of the car for a walk, have someone put it down in the area where you're going to walk her oh. so she has the scent of her own. I'm I sure she'll start i got to tell you, on. buddy, this sounds like a fascinating scientific experience. Not an experience. 33 years of experience. <laughs> there you go. Thanks again. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to put you on hold, and I am going to send you for your beautiful little dog. I am going to send you. It's a young dog. We want to keep the dog nice and healthy. I am going to send you some author suit gold to keep those hips and joints in the best shape ever. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. Quick break, then right back to your phone calls. Come back on the Petra. By the way, we just got a new shipment of those T-shirts. We were out of them. So many people bought them. Those are the ones I designed. They're black T-shirts that say, none of my friends walk upright. Guaranteed to create conversation if you're wearing one. They're available at my website. I think they're like $15.99, and I believe shipping is free, and the money goes to help the uh, the Hugs and Kisses Animal Fund. So check out those T-shirts at thepetshow.com. Back to the busy phone lines here. We are going to Andrew in Anaheim. Hey, Andrew, how are you? Fine, thank you, and thank you for taking my call. I have two dogs and a dog run that they use to go to the bathroom in. And the dog run has a base of uh, decomposed granite and then gravel on top of that. I clean it probably twice a day, depending on how often they use it. And what I'm looking for is a product that will kill the odor in there. Um, no matter how much I keep it clean and hose it down, eventually the odor from the urine and stuff rises and I, I don't want a perfume i want something that'll have enzymes that will work on destroying the odor so i guess chanel number five is not the answer huh <laughs> no okay uh that i've given that to my wife and the dog <laughs> that i think uh <laughs> we'll go for that. Uh, you know, I listen, I, I remember when they first started coming out with perfume for dogs and some of the names there. But listen to me carefully, okay? This is a common problem. The drainage system you seem to have works pretty well. It sounds pretty good to me, okay? However, right. so many products on the market are used to cover up the scent of urine and stool. 
Covering up exactly. the scent of urine and stool does not get rid of the scent of urine and stool. It covers them up. So it smells like perfume for a day. There's one product and one product only I have been using for many, many years. It's made, manufactured right here in beautiful Seattle, Washington, okay? It's a great product. It's called Kids and Pets Stain and Odor Remover. Um, it's less expensive than all the rest, but it works so much better. I mean, you can't even compare Kids and Pets compared to the other products on the market. Um, it's a, you know, I'm going to be doing a commercial for them in a little while, but they're available at, at Home Depot. They're available at Walmart. It's available at, uh, at Amazon. So what I'm going to do, Andrew, is I am going to send you a gift certificate, and you can pick up some of the Kids and Pets Stain and Odor Remover. I want you to follow the directions on the back, clean it up, really soak it well. And then one of the things I recommend is you can take some of the kids and pets, it's a liquid, and you can mix it with just a drop of water, put it in a spray bottle like you would, you know, fertilize your your uh, your, your uh, plants in the backyard and just spray right. it every other day on top of the uh, on top of the stone. The stone's a good drainage, probably take a couple of days, but your odor should be gone. Your dogs will be happy and you'll be able to smell your wife's Chanel again, I promise. <laughs> okay, but so then it's only a couple of drops in a in a spray bottle. Well, it, it, no, it's only a, a little bit of water, and the, the majority of the spray bottle is going to be the kids and pet stain and odor removal. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, because I that's I've I've used different products that I connect to the hose and their spray bottles and. Yeah, let me so tell this, you, this is this is the product that works. Take it from me. This is the only product I recommend for picking up, you know, urine stool, and, and it really makes all the difference. Listen, my dog's 16 years old, okay? So occasionally, now, at 16, you know, he's going to, you know, Cisco's going to throw up. He's not, he hasn't any access, but he's going to throw up once in a while. It's just the way it is, you know, at his age. And this is the only product I use. And let me tell you, you could walk into my house. He could have thrown up an hour ago. You would never know it. So then it can also be used like on carpet? If Absolutely. Next. You can use it on carpet. If you're going to use it on furniture, I would check it out on the back first. It's a great right. product I've been recommending for years. If it's coming out of my mouth and I'm endorsing it with my own voice, you know it's a product I believe in. Awesome. Thank you so very much. And do not go anywhere. I'm going to put you on hold. The lovely Suzette's going to pick up and I am going to send you a gift certificate for kids and pets stain and odor remover. What a great product. It is. Here's what I'm going to do. Lisa in La Cañada. Took me how many? 20 years to say La Canada. You say La Canada, right? La, thank you. I see the applause coming in. We got Diane in Oxnard. We got Ron in Huntington Beach. We got Dan in Burbank. We're going to get to your calls. But I also want you to grab your pens and papers because as you all know by now, when I get off the air here, I run across the hall as fast as I can to do my national, my Canadian show. It's the same type of show, give away the same type of gifts. The only difference is the questions come in from all over the U.S. and Canada. So, when we come back, I'm going to give you that phone number. So in case I run out of time, you're out shopping, doing what you're doing, you're running, you're jogging, you're playing with your dog in the park, but you want to give me a call, you got a question, I give away the same gift, the same type of show. So grab your pens and papers. When we come back, I'll give you that phone number as well. In the meantime, Lisa, Diane, Ron, Dan, don't go anywhere. The phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. So got plenty of time to answer all of your pet and animal questions and lots of great stuff to give away here as well. Back on the Pet Show, I'm Warren next time. Just a reminder, there's a big event going on, a super pet adoption event today from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Irvine Animal Care Center at 6443 Oak Canyon in Irvine. Um, check it out at the Irvine Animal Care Center. If you're looking for a new best friend, you may find it right there. Uh, listen, before we get back to the phone lines here, and I'm going to give you that phone, the phone number for the national show. Let me give it to you right now in case you run out of time. It's 877-725-8255, 877 You can start calling that number at 1 o'clock, and I'll get to your call. So I want to tell you about an event coming up because this is a, a really important event to me. My good friend, uh, uh, Jerry Gilliland, having put together. It's the first dog-friendly fundraiser that will be at Chiquita's Friends at Cornell in Agora Hills. It's going to take place on Sunday, June 24th from 1 to 4 p.m. I will be there. Please join me. Visit their newly renovated sanctuary in this amazing village of Cornell. You can sip on local wines, taste some delicious vegetarian and vegan food from Lula Cocina Mexicana. I will be muddling, and not me, but Jerry will be muddling up some very delicious fresh raspberry, blackberry, jalapeno margaritas along with senior blood oranges and a margarita cocktail. There'll be live cooking demonstrations in the farmhouse kitchen. I want you to join fellow dog lovers on a walk through the beautiful newly renovated ranch at Cornell. If you're up to it, if you don't have a dog of your own, uh, they'll give you a dog to walk with. This is an incredible group sponsored by Cornell 
Winery, Lula Cochina Mexicana, uh, uh, Connecting Canines with uh, Daniel Bigelow, Me Canines, lots of great people. Anyway, bottom line is this. Jerry's going to be on the air with me in a couple of weeks talking about the event. You can go to chiquitasfriends.org, chiquitasfriends.org, or go to my website. I am so looking forward to this event. I want to hug and kiss all the dogs. I want to meet all of you. So you can go to my website as well. You'll see it there, thepetshow.com, thepetshow.com. Uh, I support Jerry 100%. They do amazing work. And Charlotte, in fact, I just was hanging out with them not too long ago. Great people. Mark that date down, Sunday, June 24th, 1 to 4 p.m. at Chiquita's Friends in Cornell in Agora Hills. It's going to be a great day for everybody. Back to the phones right now. We are going to Lisa. Uh, hey, Lisa, welcome to the Pet Show. Hey, Warren. How are you? I am doing great. How about yourself? I'm good, thank you. It's a beautiful day. Uh, first of all, in answer to your question, an animal trumps an evil person every single time. See, and I had an argument with one of the main hosts here, and he said, well, human beings, because they have souls. And I said, what, you mean animals have no souls? And I said, what kind of God would not give animals souls? I don't get it. Every animal I've had has a soul, a there wonderful you go. soul. So, so my question is this. Um, we are the ones with the eight-year-old eight golden retriever who is in full cancer remission, thankfully. And we also lost our black lab a while ago to another form of cancer. So we have been, a uh, rescue organization reached out to us. There's a four month old black lab puppy. It belongs to a family that can no longer afford to take care of it. And they're in an apartment. And if they don't find a home for the puppy, it's going to be evicted. They're going to be evicted. And my daughter is very excited about having a new four month old black lab Of course, lab who wouldn't be? So um, my question for you is this, I called, we have to go pick the puppy up tomorrow, and I've called a number of vets because according to the rescue organization, the uh, puppy has only had one set of shots since four months old, and I've had three different vets give me three different answers. The first one said, oh, you can introduce your dog immediately, don't worry about the health concerns right after it gets the vaccination. The second vet said, no, you need to put the puppy in quarantine for 72 hours before you introduce your dog because of your dog's immune system. And the third said you have to put the puppy in quarantine for two weeks and keep it completely isolated from your dog. I don't know the answer. Uh, you, you, you're confusing me. <laughs> you're confusing me. Um, see what happens when you speak to too many people. What I type, I, we, do we know the vaccine she had at four months? She, no, she had that. He, it's a he puppy yeah. and he had him. At the, I guess whatever you get at eight weeks is what he got. He got the first set of all, you know, whatever. Puppies. I'm sure the Bordadella, Corona, all those, you know, all right. those, all those exactly. viruses. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it really depends. Don't you have a regular vet that you use for your own dog? I do have a regular vet and he's in Hawaii. <laughs> okay. Well then wait till he, when's he coming back? Uh, next Thursday, I think. Well, you can so. wait till wait till next Thursday. I don't want you going to get all confused. You're going to change vets, get different answers. Let the vet that's been taking care of your dog for a long time, he's okay. the vet that's going to be taking care of the new puppy. Let him make the decision in terms of, you know, a lot of people aren't giving their dog shots the way they used to. A lot of vets aren't giving shots the way they used to. So if you're going to be using a veterinarian consistently as you have been, what I would recommend doing is just stick with the same vet. His is the advice that I would recommend you follow. Okay. All right. Then that's what I'll do. I'll, um, and, and the puppy, it has to be rescued tomorrow, but you know what? I think if I keep the puppy, um, we have a beautiful backyard addition and I keep him back there and we have him on one part of the lawn and ours on the other. I think they don't see each other. I think I can just do that. I for think, I think you, I think you're going to be fine. I would not be overly concerned. Okay. Thank you so much. Lisa, and Lisa, can I send you something? No, what I want you to do is donate to Monty because I love the idea of uh, Army veterans getting help. You know, Monty's an incredible guy. We, we were both in the service about the same time. I was in Southeast Asia and Europe, and I, I think Monty was in Germany. I believe he was also in South America. He was an intelligence officer. So we, we have a great conversation, a great rapport. So I will definitely donate something to Monty. And when we get those T-shirts, when he has those new T-shirts made up, I'll talk about that on the air as well. But in the meantime, I appreciate the call and uh, give that new puppy a hug and a kiss for me. Thanks, Warren. Have a great Saturday. You too now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Quick break, then right back to your phone calls. Write this number down, because if I run out of time, this is the number you're going to need to call starting at 1 o'clock, 877-725-8255. But we are just a bit out of time. Just a reminder that the uh, phone number for the network show, the Network Canadian show, we start at 1 o'clock just two minutes from now. You can start calling at 1. It's the same type of show. Uh, Diane, Ron, Dan, you'll be my first ones up. That phone number is 877 725-8255. 
877-725-8255. But right now, if you're listening right here, stay on Carol A because coming up is one of my favorite shows, Living Pain Free with Dr. Mark Down, my good friend Nita. Until next week, give all your pets a big hug and a kiss for you. One right between the ears for me. I'm Warren Eckstein. You've been listening to The Pet Show.